Welcome to lecture 8 of our design lecture series on design of steel structure based on Indian code. In our previous lecture, we completed the application of load and today we will go through the analysis portion and some checks that have to be performed according to our codal provisions after the analysis. So before starting analysis, there are two things left to be done. One is to define the mass source. So let's go to this define option here and then go to this mass source option. We have a default mass source here. We will modify that mass source. So left click on modify show mass source. Here we have checked additional mass and specified load patterns. We haven't checked here element self mass. So we will add dead load pattern here and with a multiplier of one. So what does this multiplier means? If you go to our code that is IS 1893 part one 2016 in table 7 point clause 7.3.2 there is one table and that table gives us the percentage of imposed load to be considered in calculation of seismic weight. So you have to consider all the dead loads fully that means 100 percentage and for live load if your live load is up to and including 3 kN per meter square, then 25% of that live load is considered. That means multiplier is 0.25. And if the magnitude is above 3, then 50% is considered. So in our ETAPS model, what we will do is we will add first all the dead loads with a multiplier 1. That means dead 1, similarly floor finish 1, wall load 1. Truss 1, dead load of stair 1, CGI load with a factor 1, and then wind load with a factor 1. Now, this live load, we have used a magnitude of 3 kN per meter square. So for this live load, we will use a multiplier of 0.25. That means 25%. Whereas, since the magnitude of our live load and stair is 4 kN per meter square that means it is greater than 3 kN per meter square we will use a multiplier of 0.50 add and we know that this li roof live load is not considered in the calculation of seismic weight so we will not take this load pattern here so we have defined and added the required load patterns with their respective multipliers so left click on ok now our default mass source is the same mass source that we have here ms src1 so this will be our default mass source left click on ok and save your model now one final thing to do before proceeding with the analysis is to apply lateral bracing to our frame system because if you see this plan view of our diagram here what you can see that these secondary beams that we have provided they act as lateral bracing to these main beams here so we have to assign the lateral bracing to make sure that the computer software understands that these are the points of lateral bracing where these secondary and primary beams meet these are the points of lateral bracing so to do that first we will select all these frame systems that means all these primary beams and secondary beams to do that what we will do is first we are at story one so go to this select option select and then coordinate specification and click joint in xy plane so if we click any joint now in this xy plane all such joints will be selected here in this way similarly go to your second floor that is z equals to 6.4 go to the same option coordinate specification joint in xy plane here and finally at your z is equal to 9.6 level select coordinate specification x y pen i will select here and these joints are now selected then go to this design option here and steel frame design option and lateral bracing so you can either provide program determined lateral bracing or you can provide some user specified lateral bracing also for now we will consider this program determined so select this option and then click on ok now the lateral bracing has been provided to your model. So save your model and now go through the analysis process. For that, go to analyze and then run analysis option. 
if you go to this set load cases to run you can see that these different types of load cases have been created automatically by the software based on our load patterns and all this action here is run so if you do not want to run any particular load case you just have to select that and then click on this run do not run case and this stair date case now changes to do not run for now we will run all our load cases so select this option run do not run all you can say all have been changed to do not run if you click this button again then all are changed to run so now left click on run now here at this right hand bottom corner it will take some time okay the software is showing some warnings here we will just ignore this warning since these warnings have been created because we have created here some null elements for example in this staircase we have selected some null elements to apply our live loads and dead loads so let me just left click on ok so now the analysis is complete and the software is now showing us displacements based on this cgi load here so you can see this deflected shape or deformed shape for different load cases for that you can either go to display and this deformed shape here or you can just use the shortcut key here so deformed shape now for now let's suppose that we want to see the deformed case or deformed shape under the dead load so select the cases uh, let me select the cases okay let me select as live load and then click on ok so this is our deflected shape based on our live load and at this bottom you can see that the maximum and minimum deflections are given here 0 0.252 and 2.491 so similarly if you want to see bending moment diagram and shear force diagram then you can select this option here display frame pier spandrel link forces and let's suppose that under this earthquake load EX, I want to see the moment 33 diagram. So let me select apply here. Okay, this is our moment 33 diagram under earthquake load EX. Similarly, under this live load, if you want to see your bending moment diagram, then this is the bending moment diagrams here. Also, if you want to see the axial force, then select this axial force option here and then click on apply and then you can see the axial force based on this live load if you want to see axial force based on this wind load case then select wind load here apply now you can see the axial force diagrams of your truss structures also you saw that in our live load case there was no axial force diagram for our truss members but if you select the wind load case since the wind load has been applied to our truss members where is wind okay wind here then you can see the axial force diagram for our wind load case also if you right click on any member here you can see the wind load case here okay if i select this live load option here and view the moment 33 diagram and then right click on any truss member you can see that very low moment is being developed in this truss members so, somewhat equal to 0 0.002 kilonewton meter and this moment is primarily due to the self weight of the truss member not because of its moment carrying capacity so that you have to understand so let's go to my 3d view let's close this if you want to see any other type of deformed shape or these individual member forces then you can select the options that we have just discussed let me just click undeformed shape here now there are some checks to be performed before proceeding to the design phase so let me select one excel sheet that i have prepared okay first let us check story drift so story drift what is 1893 part 1 in 2016 says is that in clause 7.11.1 story drift in any story shall not exceed 0 0.004 times the story height 
that means the story drift value should not exceed 0.004 to check that what we will do is we will go to our etaps model go to display and show tables here you can see that you can generate table for different things like some information related to our model that we have created the information related to the analysis phase and the information related to design phase that is design data since we have not performed design up till now there are not many options under this design here so we would like to see the analysis result and in analysis result first we would like to see story drift for that just expand this analysis results tree then go to joint output go to okay go to displacements and then here select this table of story drift and then left click on okay here you will see that you can see the value of different story drift here for different story levels and for different load cases we would like to see story drift for earthquake in x direction and earthquake in y direction so under this case type just right click here and then okay not under this case type under this output case right click here and just first select this earthquake yux option and then come outside you can see all of these story drift are now being given for the output case eq yux just copy this table in excel and just paste it like this i have just copied and pasted four columns here for example story output case direction and drift and all of these are drift values that you will get so find the maximum value of drift from this column here we can see that our maximum value is 1.38 to the power minus 0 minus 3 that means less than this value is less than 0 0.004 because this means 0 0.00138 so now we can see that the value of drift in due to eq x is less than 0 0.004 similarly do the same thing for output case eq y just right click here and then select eq y case copy this table to excel and again find the maximum value of drift here i have done the same for eq y here and the maximum value of drift that you get is again the same 0 0.00138 which is less than 0 0.004 hence the story drift limitation is satisfied that is our building has drift within the permissible limits so just close this table now after checking for drift we would like to check for mass participating ratios for that again go to this same option here display and show tables just deselect the previous thing that you have selected here under this analysis result go to structure output expand this go to modal information here expand this tree and then select this second option here modal participating mass ratios so in our previous videos also we have discussed what these mass ratios represent these modal participating mass ratios are a way of checking how healthy your structure is that means how good your structure behaves under the effect of the lateral forces so again you can just if you need you can just copy this whole table and paste it into your excel so i'm not doing that for now so let me just look at these various things here for example you can see that in this first mode here the vibration period is 0.44 second and 87.6 percentage mass is contributing to the x direction motion that means our first mode primary mode is vibration in x direction also in our second mode 63.4 percentage mass is participating in y direction or so our second mode of vibration is deformation in y direction and in our third mode you can see that it is a torsional mode and the percentage of mass participating in torsion all uh, about z direction is 0 0.64 that means 64 percentage so our two fundamental modes are translation mode and the third mode is a torsional mode so this is 
a good behavior of a structure this is a desirable behavior of a structure so you can say that our structure is considerably healthy looking at this model mass participating mass ratios so there is one thing to be checked here for example our same code is 1893 discusses in 7.7.5.2 the number of modes to be used in the analysis for earthquake shaking along a considered direction should be such that the sum total of modal masses of these modes considered is at least 90 percent of the total seismic mass so in this table you can see that 12 modes of vibration have been considered for now and in our last mode that is 12th mode the cumulative mass in x direction is 99.98 percentage and in y direction is 99.96 percentage and also in z direction is 99.66 percentage so this value some ux some uy and some rz is greater than 90 percentage so this number of modes that is 12 number of modes is okay we do not have to consider more number of modes because it says that the some total of modal masses should be at least 90 percentage and all in all our cases it is 99 percentage similarly table 6 of the same code says is that in buildings located in seismic zones 4 and 5 in should be ensured that the first three modes together contribute at least 65 percent mass participation factor in each principal plant direction so let's look at this third mode here up to this third mode our sum ux is 89.25 percentage sum ui is 0.8471 that means 84.71 percentage and sum rz is 0.851 that is 85 percentage so the sum total of modal masses up to this third mode of vibration is greater than 65 percentage and also the fundamental lateral natural periods of the building in the two principal plan directions are away from each other by at least 10 percentage of the larger value so let's not go to that for now let's just see that 65 percentage of mass is being contributed by the first three modes so it is our almost 84 85 and 89 so that's also okay in this way you can check for modal participating mass ratios and finally last one thing to check is torsional irregularity for torsional irregularity if you see this figure here this figure also i have taken from the same code is 1893 to ensure that there is no torsional irregularity in our building we have to ensure that the maximum deflection is less than 1.5 times the minimum deflection so what happens is that if you see here this condition which i have derived from table 5 if the ratio of maximum horizontal displacement at one end and the minimum horizontal displacement at the other end is greater than 2 in this two number here the building configuration shall be revised and if it is between 1.5 and 2 the building configuration shall be revised to ensure that the natural period of the fundamental torsional mode of oscillation should be smaller than the first two translational modes so let's see if you go to your etaps model let's go to our plan view at story 2 for example you are, although you have to check this in every story let's go to story 2 here let's see the deformed shape of this story under and the earthquake load in y direction okay now since the earthquake load is in y direction here you can check the Okay, I think this earthquake force in y direction is not showing the deformation in y direction. So I think we have made a mistake while defining the earthquake load pattern. So let me just unlock this model here and then go to define load pattern option. In this earthquake force in x direction, eqx, if you left click on modify lateral load, 
this all these directions are being selected here so i will just since this is earthquake force in x direction i will uncheck this y option here and okay response reduction factor 5 seismic zone factor soil type importance factor all are okay i will leave this time period as program department and left click on okay similarly eqy select this and go to modify lateral load now uncheck this x direction boxes i think in our previous lecture we just defined these load patterns and left them as they were we forgot to modify this uh, auto lateral load option here so i will uncheck this x direction option and then left click on ok ok and then run analysis again so now that we have done this you may have to check for drift once again because our we have performed some modifications in our load patterns here so just i am not going to go through that option again just check the story drift and the mass participating ratios once again in a similar way that we have just discussed i will just directly check for torsional irregularity now so now this is our deflected shape here let me go to story 2 once again and then i will see the deformed shape here so deformed shape under the earthquake load in y direction here and then left click on ok ok now it's ok because previously even when we were selecting this earthquake load in y direction we were seeing deformation in x direction that was because we did not define the load patterns carefully now that we have defined those load patterns properly you can see our structure is being displaced in y direction you can also see in this 3d view here this is the deformed shape under this eqy so we are seeing the deflection of our structure in y direction now go to our plan view here at story 2 let's look at this joint here if you hover over this joint you can see that our displacement in y direction ui is 4.881 let me just write it here 4.881 Similarly, our displacement in another joint is 6.376. You can see here UY 6.376. So 4.881 is our minimum deflection and 6.376 is our maximum deflection. So now let us perform 1.5 into minimum deflection. So 1.5 into 4.881 gives you 7.3215 so you can see that our maximum deflection is less than 1.5 times the minimum deflection hence our structure is torsionally regular it is below 1.5 so it is okay similarly you can check this same for earthquake load in x direction also in this same story to let's go to this deformed option again and then select the cases eqx and then left click on ok now you will see our structure is deflected in the x direction so the deflection at this point is here 6.347 that is 6.347 and the deflection at the other end is 6.228 6.228 so the deflections are obviously very near so this maximum deflection less than 1.5 times of minimum deflection condition will obviously be satisfied here even when you do not know the values you can check that since our structure is longer in the x direction there are one two three four five six columns in this grid our structure is stiffer in this x direction compared to the y direction so that we are getting here almost equal deflections at the both ends so in this way you can check for torsional regularity or irregularity of your structure do this for every other story that is story 1 and story 3 also so these checks we have discussed three major checks here first check for story drift then check for mass participating ratios and then check for torsional irregularity you can also check for dynamic wind effects that means if you need to consider the dynamic wind effects in the design of this structure but since this is our normal small scale structure then that may not be needed here 
So in our next class, what we will do is, let me save this model. We will start with the design of our structure. We will see the design of our steel frame elements and the design of these secondary beams here. And then we will see some connection design, including the design of base plate and then beam column connection. So we will meet again soon in our next lecture. Thank you. Stay safe.